doing a fish can rodent coil experiments. Okay, so we're going to uh, explore some additional things about this coil. I have wired this up to my uh, pulse generator in such a way that um, the uh, two coils are hooked up in series, taking care to hook up the, uh, the, the top lead to the bottom lead of the next coil. <clears throat> or preserving the polarity of the spin, basically. Um, and I'm going to be playing with uh, frequencies in here that range from um, 6 hertz to 30 hertz. Um, so what I have here is a, uh, a stack of magnets. Um, these are sort of weaker ring magnets, and these are two very powerful neodyms. In, and I protected them with bottle caps because they're always smacking together. But any, Anyway, we have basically a stack of batteries here. I'm going to put it uh, under the coil <clears throat> like this. And you will notice a piston effect. So I think the uh, the audio auto industry should look at this. Maybe General Motors, who desperately needs new technology for cars. This is an interesting way to make a piston go up and down. I'll try the. Uh, the other direction. I'm gonna line this up better. So this is now a, a pushing whoops pushing pushing direction. It's a little harder for me to keep the magnet there. So now the magnet's being pushed down. Sounds like a real uh, engine here. Now, um, if you were to try to do a similar thing with just a solenoid, you'd be finding that the magnet would be sticking to your solenoid all the time. Uh, this is. Um, the rodent shape uh, allows for the piston to go up and down through the, um, the hole, essentially. Or basically be pushed away or pulled toward. Uh, I can't describe what... I mean, this feels very unusual. Um, should try to replicate this and see what this feels like. This is a very, very strange thing. Now I'm going to show you another thing here. With this uh, stack of magnets away. Uh, I also have um, magnets that look like this. Uh, the poles are um, on the outer side. There's like a north and a south, so you'll see they stick together in this way. And you can ro rotate, rotate them 180 and they'll stick. Put these in here. Whoops, put another coil out. Now they don't spin around in a circle, uh, they just kind of vibrate. Thirty hertz. Now 
Yeah, right around uh, 20 hertz, I'm feeling, uh, or there's sort of a certain place where I can feel this on my muscles. So there's like a inductive response on the muscles in my body. Okay, this is an interesting effect. I've got uh, my um, circuit pulsing at 360 hertz with the very narrow pulse width, and um, the rodent coil is hooked up in such a way that the uh, the primary is being pulsed. The secondary has the scope across it, but also a variable resistor, so I can dial in uh, that balance that I was talking about. Um, and I managed to get it into a state where we see uh, the inductive ring crawl across the scope like a worm. This is very cool. Let me uh, change the um, seconds per division to be a little bit slower. That is a weird effect. Um, I have this on um, 20 volts per division. Now it's related to this resist resistance I'm putting on there, so it, as I change that, um, so that's a more uh, lower resistance. This is a resistance that's increasing. Uh, and notice also the uh, the ring is being um, shaped a little bit. I've switched to a, uh, instead of using a battery, I've switched to a power supply that's plugged into the wall, so there's a possibly a bit of 60 cycle hum making its way into the system here. Still, this is a very oddly shaped inductive ring. Um, I, I think this is some kind of beat frequency effect because as I alter the frequency, um, I can make the... Uh, so here I am uh, increasing the frequency. I can make the beating happen um, faster and faster. Oh, and it shifted direction. Uh, so it's a harmon harmonic beating. So perhaps the 60 cycle uh, line voltage is beating against whatever frequency I'm pinging the coil at. I probably need either better filtering or, or go back to batteries.